Well, hello everyone. Welcome along to Pelos, a uh, well, a brand new series for us. I was quite taken by this map when we did the map tour, and I thought, what better place to try out some equipment we haven't used and uh, get into a little bit of different type of farming. So uh, here we are. We're on the town side of the river. We've got a little farm here with a couple of side hill combines running, uh, harvesting some peas. Not yielding the best, I must admit. Uh, I haven't even filled up the hoppers yet on the combines. Uh, but that's all right. We've got a few fields over here we'll harvest and we'll see exactly how we go. But uh, the premise behind this series, this is called The Tale of Two Farms. And we are here, like I said before, we are over the side of the river on these smaller farms using some smaller, older equipment. On the other side of the river, up in the bigger hills and the bigger fields, we've actually got some bigger equipment and that is going to be our second farm. So we're going to be jumping between the two, kind of an episode on each farm. Uh, and alternating between them and just getting some work done. This might only be for one season. We might get through harvest this year and then possibly look at maybe jumping into a uh, jumping into some tillage work, some seeding and things like that. Uh, let's just see if I can get this to start unloading. There we go. We got a little bit faster. I thought I had the cruise control set properly, but six miles per hour. In fact, we're on a bad spot. As course play is going to go around at an angle. What I might do, wait for them to get around and then we can do it along that straight edge along the top. But like I said, Nice to be able to get in here using Tide Iron Modding's 6600 series John Deere side hills. Uh, nice little bit of kit actually and work really really well. One thing that's missing now that I've jumped in on this map and looking around at equipment, some really decent size uh, side hill combines would be fantastic. I've been looking at some images of harvesting in Glaus and uh, some of the images with the side hills are pretty fantastic, pretty incredible to see where some of this equipment works. So looking forward to getting over the other side into some of that terrain and land and uh, seeing how the gear we've got works. Anyhow, just looking at these guys, I think they've sorted themselves out and uh, we'll let them carry on harvesting. So we'll head on over in just a minute, we'll get these guys emptied out, get them carried on. We've got another field next door to us which we will move into after this one. Uh, four fields in total for this farm, just down the bottom here. Now in terms of the farm setup, it is all set up on one farm, we're not doing this on a multiplayer server or anything like that where we can have multiple farms. We are just running this all as a single farm, so uh, any income or anything like that isn't going to be split, it's just going to be shared across the two. But uh, that's not the aim, the aim is to try some different things out and just have a little bit of fun. We'll get this guy unloaded, we'll get the other combine unloaded, and uh, then moving on. Not going to take too long to get the field finished off, this is the last of the three headland passes. And then we'll go have a look at this farm, check out the equipment, I'll show you the map and you can see exactly where we set up and what we have, and uh, we'll go from there. In the right spot, just about. Mindful of the fact we've got the 4440 here running some big white jewels, but it's a little bit hard to get close enough there for the combine. That looks not well, like we're going the right speed for them. Still struggling to get close enough. There we go. No, nope, looks like we've clipped the header. We get turned out of that. Ah, we'll wait for them to get to a better spot. Maybe we'll wait for them to get full and then we'll worry about emptying them out. Let's leave them going. Let's go and check out the farm. So welcome to our little piece of paradise here in Palaus. This is the uh, small farm that I was talking about. We'll set up with the John Deere's farmhouse up there on the left. And we've gone and built ourselves a little yard. So if you jump on the map, you won't actually find this shed and uh, this yard set up here. It's taken a little bit of space so that we set up down here next to the fields we own and are running down here with this equipment. Um, pretty simple setup, really not too much to see, and in fact, probably the newest thing that's on this whole farm is the shed. Uh, but we've got three silos here, these are the silos that came with the map, uh, which are placeable, so you can put those down. A couple of older augers there, the BC Bueller vintage auger pack, uh, they're going to come in very handy for filling and emptying those bins, which is good. Uh, John Deere cultivator here, this is Pleasant View Farms, his uh, 20 foot cultivator, we've used that before on No Man's Land. We've got the John Deere branded ones, this farm, as you can see, pretty much green and yellow all around. Head on over here into the shed, a uh, little sprayer there, be about a nine meter, nine meter wide spray width, so not the biggest, but we do have a couple of three tractors. Obviously already seen, I did say it was a 40 series, it's a 4955 over in the farm. It's uh, got the jewels, but it's only a two wheel drive. Uh, a couple of bigger tractors here, or this bigger tractor, 8420T, uh, quite a nice looking tractor and that's got some decent horsepower, some decent grunt for us to run. I don't know whether we need three tractors, it's probably a little bit of overkill here, but uh, I always have a soft spot for the 6910 
It's very similar to a tractor I grew up driving. Uh, we've used it before in other series and I just wanted to have it in here for a little bit of fun and uh, just to try out and use. So we'll see. We'll find time to try and use it. We've only got the cedar here now. We're not planting any row crop uh, crops around this area. Uh, it's lots of legumes, cereal crops and things like that. So we've gone for the cedar here. This is the tandem is John Deere 1500. Uh, runs in tandem obviously. So that's a nice bit of kit. We've used that once before as well. Uh, back in Griffin, Indiana. Last time we used that and it went pretty well down there. Can be a little bit finicky and uh, fiddly on the turns. But other than that you treat it right. It looks after you. Gets the crops in the ground. Our truck here, this is the Volvo uh, WIA, this is the pack by BC Bueller again, so nice to try that out, something a little bit different and paired with the uh, dump bed there on the back, that part of the same, not the same pack but uh, the mod pack again by BC Bueller, the um, tipping bodies and truck bodies that came out to be paired with this pack as well as with their uh, Mac grain hauling pack. Uh, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else to see, that's about it down here on the farm, not a huge amount of anything really. That's what we need to be able to get the jobs done. We'll take a look at the map and I'll show you what we're working with and uh, give you a little bit of an idea on the rest of the farm but uh, we'll take a look at that in the next episode to see how the main farm is set up and what equipment we have up there. If you haven't already checked out my map tour of this, uh, go and have a look. I think it's a pretty cool little map, a little bit different to what we've seen from Camille before, uh, much smaller than his larger maps obviously that he's done previously. But for this farm, we're set up right up here in the top right corner, in the back of town, opposite the animal dealer. There's four fields around here, so field 18, where we've started off with our harvest. We've got the lentils and both those fields. Have a look there with the uh, crop types, lentils there. So these two fields have both got lentils ready to harvest. Looks like our course play uh, combines might have a little bit of an issue, so we'll have to go over and sort those out. And we've also got these other two fields in here, 12 and 13, which both have peas in them so it's nice a couple of crops I have not tried uh, be nice to give those a go and then over the other side uh, just to see there got the main farmyard set up up here with all our equipment you can see on the map and uh, then some crops that are all ready to go as well I've got flax in and around the yard uh, some peas in either side a lot of lentils over the other side and then some wheat stretching through this belt of uh, fields here so it's gonna be great get in and, and as you'd expect we're going to be harvesting this much area. We have quite a significant amount of equipment, but like I said, save that for the next episode. So I think, having seen the farm, having seen things and how they are all set up and running, we'll carry on with the uh, combining. We'll go and get those two combines sorted out, get them moving again, get that field finished, and then we'll head on into the next one. We've finally managed to get these to unload. It's a really a uh, tricky little trigger to pick up. Quite hard to do on the move, and I think the side hill doesn't help. Uh, I think when you're uphill of the auger, the uh, angle of the trigger might not be quite the best to pick up, but we are getting it unloaded, which is good. Uh, it wasn't close to full though, we probably could have let them carry on and get finished uh, without having to unload either of the combines, but we're here, we might as well do it, make ourselves useful. But uh, yeah, this has gone pretty well, this field just about done, and uh, we'll be able to scoot across the edge. Now, there is a field entrance just on the other side of the animal dealer, get down into there, but uh, soon we're in the field already any harm in scooting across the grass to go and get into there. So uh, I think, about empty here, uh, just ignore where the header is in relation to our front tyre, that can slip back a little bit so just get this back into a spot where it's not an issue and uh, we'll leave them to go, there we go, looks like they're empty so not too bad, 6600 litres so far, not a huge amount of uh, lentils that we're getting off this field but it's probably all the same. And uh, obviously we have the opportunity to try and make it more productive when we do things ourselves and uh, get everything set up nicely. We do have precision farming on the map so uh, bear that in mind when we are preparing our crops and everything like that. And there you go, you can just see these fields, uh, lots of loamy sand up in here. Very little bit of sandy loam down here in the edge of this but uh, no silty clay which is good. And as I said in my map tour, very little silty clay across the whole map. In general which is uh, very nice and lots of the sandy loam which you know, one of the most productive soil types so uh, that's pretty impressive at least to see all of that we can't be too far away from being finished this could just about be the last pass of that combine just wait and see if they stop when they get to the end here or turn around no it does look like that is the last pass for them so what we're going to do is going to go and jump in there um, and tidy up these field corners to the upturned a little bit of crop mist so we'll tidy those up and then we'll take this one over to set up the horseplay 
in the next field and uh, then we'll follow over with the other one. I'm actually thinking we'll probably ride along for quite a bit of the next field just because of how low this is yielding and uh, the speed these harvest at. It's not really uh, not really worth sitting in a grain cart waiting for them to be ready to unload uh, because we could have done this whole field without unloading at all. So, go and get this uh, tidied up and get moved into the next one. So things are all moved over and we're up and going here in field number 2 or field number 17 as the case may be. Now I'm not sure what it is with course play but it wants to drive the auger out for uh, these combines. I'm sure there is something setting or uh, something like that. I've had a good look through the course play setting but it's not come up with against or across before so yeah I'm not sure exactly what's causing that but we're just uh, we're just carrying on we're going to follow along here with one lead combine there so to go up with quite a bit of a mount there as we're getting down closer to the river uh, but we'll just ride along behind here for a little bit until we need to unload and uh, get that all sorted we will have to bring the truck over or at least take the grain cart back over to the yard to uh, bump into the augers probably best to do it out of the truck when we're throwing it grain out of the auger up nice and high down into a uh, into a grain auger off the ground so uh, we'll see we'll probably get the truck out and do it through that but anyhow let's ride along here and get some of this field done just about managed to finish this field without having to unload the combines even once uh, I haven't even looked in them to see how full they are I have to go and hop in one and see exactly what there is left just this last little section up in here which really is pretty skinny and narrow if we went on course play we'd be doing that in the other direction obviously would make the most sense let's just uh, hop over there we'll just jump into this back combine and see how full it is still only 71% of the summer yeah we could have carried them going for a lot longer Obviously two combines though, bear that in mind, so while it's only 71% in this one, across the two of them are 100% full, so it's not a, not a bad amount, 10,000 
15,000 or so litres off this one field, which is uh, certainly not anything to worry about. So we'll get them emptied out once they're completely finished. Looks like there must be another pass each here, and uh, a little bit down there, we'll tidy up in the corners. Uh, other corners, actually, even we look all pretty clean, so I don't think we'll have to bother going back and tidying up any of those. But uh, there we go, two fields done. Very impressed, very happy with all of that. Well, I think we're going to have to reconsider our grain cup because the trigger here working with these uh, these combines is not very uh, user friendly to say the least. It's very temperamental, very hard to find the trigger at the right time and get things unloading. In fact, while it's showing us is going down, oh, there we go, now we're in the trigger. Uh, things just, it's just not working. It's uh, pretty frustrating. So we might look at uh, replacing this grain cart if we can't get this to work just a little bit better. There we go, we're in it and out of it. It looks obviously sliding and moving around a little bit, but I mean, logic dictates I should be able to unload that combine there right in the middle of the grain cart. But we'll persevere, we'll get this emptied out. Uh, we could even bring the truck over actually and just completely dodge running a grain cart through here. Uh, that's probably full now. So we'll get this back over to the yard, get things emptied out, and get all these combines tidied up. But getting the lentils here into the back of the truck, what I might do, is just thinking about it, I might take the truck over into the field actually. That way we can test out to see whether the trigger is an issue with the grain cart. If we can get the truck to unload, and all the combines to unload into the truck without any issues, we know it's probably more than likely an issue here with this cart rather than the truck, uh, rather than the combines. And then we can have a look and try and find maybe a better suited crank cart for this little farm. But uh, there we go, just about emptied. All out. Right, leave this here, turn it off, and we're going to jump in the truck, go for a drive. I just say, as we're driving over here, how much I'm enjoying this Thrustmaster controller with the little steering wheel. Um, just the way I can control the steering and adjust the lock, turn without all the jerky nature that I might have used to have had with a controller with uh, driving with the analog sticks on a controller so uh, this is actually I'm really really enjoying it and uh, the more I use it the more I'm getting comfortable with how it all feels so uh, definitely definitely pleased to have been given the opportunity to try it out anyhow get on over this way two combines still in here pop up next to the first one here and uh, see when we get in underneath that auger trigger works in fact we go too fast in under here out and make sure we're not going to clash with it at all. Be tight, but no. And there we go. Unloading no drummers. So I'm going to have to go out on a limb and say that that uh, grain cart's not the most suitable for us and uh, we might look to have that replaced. Alright, all done. 18,000 litres in total. Now it's just while we were unloading there, I was just having a quick look at the store into the uh, commodities menu to see what the uh, price was for lentils and I can now appreciate why there is such a low yield. I think uh, compared to soybeans which you also know are a high value crop with a lower yield, uh, the maximum price for lentils was this that is over two thousand dollars per thousand litres whereas soybeans were only 150 or so. So uh, unless there's some modifications to the crop pricing, I understand why the lentil yield is so low because the potential price for it is so high. So let's get back over to the farm and uh, we'll definitely be getting these put into a bin if that is what they are going to be worth. We get backed up in here, we have got the uh, 6910 out to be running the auger. Now we'll back up, we've got the grandor selected. Is our tip point. Now, hmm, doesn't seem to be giving us a trigger. What happens if we start tipping it? Oh no, it is going. It doesn't just to trigger for it to say it's working. If I can hear it, it's running up there. We're not quite aligned with the bin as well as we could. Let's just jump out. Go and see if the bin shows that it's getting some lentils in it now. And have a look. It's inside it. And there we are. Let's say 10,000 litres of lentils in there. So uh, that's perfect. Yeah. Exactly as I would hope. Let's have a look there. Oh, stop tipping. Hopefully we haven't hit a capacity limit on this one. So that's an alignment issue. Let's try and just make sure things are... All aligned and uh, we can keep on tipping things out. And there we go, truck is empty. It was an alignment issue with the auger by the seam, by the looks of things. Uh, we moved a couple of things around, got it lined up a little bit better and we're able to tip into it and get the truck emptied out, which is fantastic. Just pop over here, should be able to see that there's that 18,000 litres of lentils sitting up here in this bin. 
which is fantastic. So I think that's a perfect place to wrap things up here for the first episode here in Palouse. Like I said at the start, this is the tale of two farms, so next time we will be on the big farm, so if you're interested in seeing what we're doing there, how that farm is set up and what's going to be happening, make sure you tune in for the next episode. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this one though, it's a lot of fun using that older equipment and uh, just having a little bit of fun with that. So, as always, thank you all very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed that and I'll catch you in the next one.